for many years now, we've been concerned about this, this condition in our rhinos called iron overload disorder. But we don't really have a good way to monitor it. We know if they get too much in their system, it can cause systematic disease to them. We started looking in the literature and found that there were papers on human research that showed that fingernails, toenails, hair, all made from keratin, the same thing these horns are made of, um, they, would, they would accumulate minerals. And so they could tell humans that had been exposed to a high levels of different minerals would have high levels of minerals in their fingernails and their toenails and their hair. If the iron is accumulating in the horn, similar to what's happening in the liver, that would be a lot less invasive way to, to monitor the iron load in the rhino. The only alternative is to get liver samples, and you, the feasibility of getting liver samples from rhinos is just is crazy. Um, extremely difficult and risky, and we just can't ask zoos to do that. Rhino horn would be ideal because a rhino probably just with a little of sedation, probably not even anesthesia, would um, allow us, because it's not going to hurt the rhino to drill into the horn. We started sampling rhino horns to see if they're going to tell us how high the iron levels are in our rhinos. And we do that by drilling into the horn and collecting a core sample, but we had to do a lot of preliminary testing. Um, we're going out and sampling horns where we can get our hands on them and trying to learn from them, you know, what is the mineral content and is iron uh, something that we can truly measure in, in, in the horn and is it going to correlate with the rhino iron overload. Some of them are from different institutions after animals have passed. We do hold on to the horns afterwards so it's going to be different zoological institutions. The Fish and Wildlife is also contributing from places where they've like, confiscated them and there's a couple other institutions participating. The challenge is that many of the horns we sample they have no ID. Um, we don't know what species they came from. We don't know what sex they came from. So our job is to try to figure out where these rhino horns came from, whether it was from a black or white rhinoceros, was it from a male or female. What we really needed was a little bit more CSI rhino work um, to kind of figure out using the DNA in the horn what species that is. So what we're doing is similar to what 23andMe do. We're making a barcode. We're doing a DNA profile on the horns so we can match. So we're using the equipment at crew to generate the reactions and then coming over here at the Cincinnati Museum Center to use their amazing equipment to look at the profile of those different horns so we can match them together. We do partner quite a bit with the nearby hospitals and now currently with the Museum Center which is a huge help to us um, because they have some of the PCR equipment and technologies that we don't have here at Crew. Being able to monitor 23 different things at one time is very difficult. So the equipment here is much more sophisticated. So we can use, they have different fluorescent dyes in one well, so we can only need to do four different wells to monitor 23. While at Crew, that would be 23 different wells per horn that we were looking at. Today we're running, you know, samples from 15 different horns all you know within six hours. If we were going to translate that to you know gels we're talking several weeks time. So we're getting samples from white rhino horns, black rhino horns, we're looking at the minerals, we're looking at the differences between species. We are also collecting liver samples from animals that have died so that we have basically that's our gold standard how much iron is in the liver and so we will have some matched horn samples and liver samples so that we can really make that analysis. So the livers with high levels of iron, do the horns on those same rhinos have high levels of iron? And that's really gonna be how we validate the methodology. We know that black rhinos suffer from iron overload. We know that white rhinos do not. So if this, this method is gonna work at all, we should see a significant difference in the iron levels in black rhino horns compared to white rhino horns. And that's one of the first things that we're trying to test. And then looking at the minerals themselves, we're finding, we've found so far over 14 minerals that we can measure in rhino horn. Iron is certainly one of them. Uh, so that's good. <laughs> at least we are, we're measuring it. Um, we were also finding that there are some other minerals that are kind of interesting. We're looking at things like arsenic and lead. Uh, things that are actually unhealthy um, because it would be very interesting to find unhealthy uh, components of rhino horn since rhino horn is used in uh, some cultures for medicinal purposes. So we're going to broaden this as much as we can. We also believe that the mineral content of rhino horn might give, give us some indication of some dietary things with rhinos and also some health issues because a lot of mineral imbalances do cause health problems in, in rhinos and, and in humans and in all kinds of animals.